This is a modeling tutorial for a mobile JRPG style character. As usual, I'll start my project by setting my project so that all my files know where they are. I'm going to create a new material in the Hypershade, which is my reference. It's a simple reference plane setup that I've covered in previous tutorials before, but I'll just go over it again. Um, I'm creating a new material, adding a file to it, which is my reference. Then I'm going to throw it on a polyplane. Make sure interactive creation is off as it will not really help you here. So once you have your plane, um, press 6 to enable textures and drag your material onto it. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees in the x-axis just to, to bring it upright. I'm going to use this one as my front view. I'm going to duplicate it, uh, rotate it 90 degrees in the y-axis to get a side view here. Um, and I'm flipping it by adding a minus one scale in, just because I'd like the character side view to face the other way. I'm going to put them in a new layer called Reference. This will allow me to change the layer mode, um, allow me to hide and show it easily, and allow it to set as a reference mode so I don't have to click on it if I don't want to. I'm going to line up the front view so that it's exactly on the grid uh, axis, the zero, zero. And then side view just needs to be close. There's no uh, hard and fast rule to, to how the side view should be hooked up. And I'm going to use the insert edge loop tool just to blow away the, the front view and side and the side view in front, just to make it a little bit easier for me to look at. So now if I set this layer to reference mode, um, the R here, now I can't click on it accidentally. It stays out of my way while I model. So I'm going to create a polycube. I'm going to use the typical box modeling method for this, so I'll add some subdivisions. I'm going to go and I'm going to blow away half the faces. I'm going to use duplicate special with negative one in the x axis and instance mode to be able to use the box modeling mirroring technique on this model. So I'm just going to resize that box, make it fit the, the general shape of the torso. See how the, the hips are actually on an angle here instead of being flat up and down? Same thing with the shoulders. This is kind of mirroring um, our anatomy a little bit more. Remember, our shoulders don't come out of our body like a rectangle. We've got a collarbone that kind of, um, it's more of a, a, a corner cut as opposed to just a, a corner tip. Same with our hips, right? Hips come out the side, bottom of our bodies, not the bottom of our bodies. So I'm just scaling this to fit, copying the reference here. It's good to catch this early. I'm going to pop into top view and I'm going to grab these uh, these corner bits and move them in, which will create the roundness to the body we're looking for. If I don't do this, we're going to have a very boxy character. Remember, the trick is to keep as low detail as possible when, when working like this. And that means you're going to be fighting a boxy look a lot, but you can do a lot with very few polygons. And if we want to go higher poly later, all we have to do is toss a smooth filter on it and add more detail if we so wish. You can see here I just turned a quad into a quad and a triangle by using the split polygon tool. You'll do this a fair bit while low poly modeling because one quad may not give you all the detail you want. You might need to change into two triangles to fit. So here I'm extruding the legs out from the bottom of the body. And I'm actually going to go off my reference now. My reference drawing has the, the legs splayed open really wide, and we actually prefer them to be pretty much straight up and down for, for rigging purposes. The legs are still there in the image, so I can still reference their shape, but I'm, I'm not basing everything completely on them anymore. For extruding the foot here, uh, I'm actually extruding it on a bend, as opposed to extruding down and then selecting a front face and extruding forward. It's important to get that bend in there. It's going to make rigging a lot better, and it will make it a lot easier to, to get the look of a foot. Again, this is a very, very basic, low-poly, simple, cartoony foot, so it's not going to take a whole lot of detail. In fact, I'm going to blow away this edge ring because it's just not really 
contributing. Okay, having a look in front view here, always always check different side front perspective views of anything that you've modeled before you go further with it, right? I've noticed that in perspective view, this foot's actually got some weird shapes to it. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to fix that. Flattening out the bottom of the foot helps a little, helps a lot. Uh, rounding out the top, just kind of getting that foot shape better defined. Also notice that the, the back of the leg here is very, very wide, very broad. This is actually the narrowest part of our leg. That's where the Achilles tendon is, right? So if I just scale that in a little bit, I fix the shape. Okay, so let's go ahead with the the arm, the shoulder. I actually want to have an extra split for the, the neck ready. I don't want to extrude the neck out of the shoulder. So I'm going to go with the cut faces tool and just make some extra room. There we go. So that top face that I have, don't have selected there, that's going to be reserved for the neck. And I'm going to move forward making the shoulder here. This is all basic extrusion stuff. I want to catch anything that's looking boxy early before I continue extruding. There we go. So just by moving these edges down, I've, I've re-rounded out this arm. Easier to fix now than after the whole arm is modeled. So let's continue extruding. This is a really simple arm shape. I'm not modeling fingers. I'm not even modeling a, a mitt shape for the hand. I'm just going to keep it as a ball. using soft select to just kind of nudge the whole arm down. I'll extrude the fist with uh, with two extra extrusions, and that should be good. Let's get the neck done here. I'll extrude up once just to get a little bit more to work with. Anytime you extrude along the center line, um, extrude a face along the center line of the object, you'll create faces along the center line. This is okay as long as you remember that they're there. Here I am selecting them and deleting them. But watch out for that. Those uh, those faces along the center line can cause problems with your normals. They can cause problems with UV map, rigging. Um, it's just it's not good to have faces hiding around, not doing anything inside a mesh. So I'm just rounding up the neck a little bit here. Okay, it looks like the body's pretty much done. I might come back later to do a little bit more detail on it. To create the head, I'm creating a, a cube, and I'm going to throw a linear smooth on it twice. This is a really quick way of making a rounded shape but not having to deal with crazy sphere geometry. We don't like to use spheres because they've got so many triangles on the top and the bottom. We can get the same result by smoothing a cube a couple times. I've also gone and deleted some of the edges that I didn't need the detail for, and now I'm, I'm just sizing this to, to match the shape of the head. You can see me scaling here to change the, um, the angle of the, the roundness of the corner here. I'm only scaling in the Z and the Y axis. I'm not doing an all direction scale. And I'm going to keep it where it is. I'm going to keep it kind of like a sharp round corner here for the chin and the back of the head. So there we go. Side view looks good. Now moving forward to front view. There we go. What I should have done earlier is I should have actually mirrored this as well, since we're going to be adding some more detail to it. But let's put the nose on first. So I do an insert edge loop, snap it to the middle, delete half the face, and then do my duplicate special trick.
Now we can do the nodes. The nose is really the only 3D detail on the face here. The eyes are going to be painted on, the mouth is going to be painted on. So all we need is a couple splits to get this nose defined. Taking a break from the nose here because I noticed that the, the face is extremely flat at the front. So I'm just going to take a minute to push around some edges here and round that out slightly. In order to get the top of the nose definition in, I need another split. There we go, there's some faces that will define the top of the nose now. And that's pretty much the shape we're looking for. Maybe tweak the forehead a bit, just to flow. I don't really like how far the nose corner is coming down here. I'm going to create another split, just to kind of tie it up. And I'll merge those two verts together. That's better. This character has kind of like a uh, a circlet part to his helmet here that I'm just going to make with a new plane as opposed to carving it out of his head shape and complicating all of those polygons. I can even use the duplicate special trick on this object. There you go. I'm turning on x-ray view in order to see through my mesh onto my reference. So I'm going to do that. Um, delete that edge. Duplicate special. Now I've got an instance of it. You can model it a little bit faster, even though this is a very, very simple shape. There we go, matches front view, and then we go into side view, and we just start bending it to, uh, to match side view. I'm noticing that my front and side view drawing is a little bit off. Um, it actually doesn't look this thick in side view, even if I mess with the rotations. So I'm just going to accept that that's okay. Leave it there. Just kind of softening and doing an inventory of how everything looks right now. Taking an overview, turn on wireframe. You can see this is really low poly still, right? We've 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 broke uh, 500 triangles, but it's still very very low poly. I'm gonna add some detail to the shoulder here. I notice he has a shoulder pad, um, and we also need more detail in the shoulder in order for it to rig properly. We don't have enough detail in the shoulder. When we bend it down, um, when it comes time to rig this, we're gonna get shrinking of the joint, kind of look like a rag doll. We don't want that. So I'm just going to use the split polygon tool. I only need detail added to the top of the shoulder, not the bottom of the shoulder, since it only, it only bends down. And then with this detail, I'll just I'll scale it up here and create kind of a shoulder pad look while I'm at it. There we go. That's about it. We'll do hair in a later step. This is the, the base that we want to use in order to, to start working with, in order to reuse later for a, a similar character.